Hey guys, it's Vanessa again from Games and Me. I've been playing this game, Fable 2, for the last couple of days. Wanted to give you my first impressions on that. It's been out for a week or two, and I just got around to playing it right now. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting because it's kind of a combination of a bunch of games put together, like... I saw some Oblivion in there, a little bit of Tomb Raider maybe, and the best comparison I could make for myself was, it's kind of like World of Warcraft for people who don't want to pay a subscription, like me. <laughs> I, it's, it's at that level of depth and um, addictiveness, I guess you would say. It has similar visuals as in like the lush world with the very saturated colors and very pretty. And it has a similar way of getting quests. Like you see a guy standing around with a giant exclamation mark above his head and you get a quest from him, go do it, return, and he'll give you something. It's kind of along those lines. And at first I was kind of skeptical about playing this game because I was told it was going to be just like Oblivion. and I don't know if you guys watched my other videos, but I was obsessed with Oblivion. So, you know, the first thing I thought of was, oh my gosh, it's going to be just like Oblivion, hooray! And then when I started playing it, the very beginning of the game is not too much like Oblivion. So I was getting kind of, you know, skeptical, critical about it, and I was thinking... I wouldn't be able to relate to the character very well because the game is a lot more mm, cartoony and comical than Oblivion. Oblivion was like dead serious, you know? So it was a very different mood than what I expected, which at first I thought was going to be a bad thing, but it the game doesn't take itself too seriously, which is a really good thing because some games just get stuck in that world and being super ultra serious uh, but so after playing it for a little while especially after getting past that first section which is great it's just not what I expected I came to the conclusion that this is a great game it's it's a lot like Oblivion as far as feel mood and the world and being open-ended go and it doesn't have one big thing that bothered me about Oblivion, which is the GIMP to leveling system. You know, where you pick your major skills and minor skills, and by doing your major skills, you level up. And so you had to find, like, loopholes and make a plan of how to level up when you wanted to and not level up and whatever. This game does not have that, which is really good. <laughs> um, also, things that I like about this game, first of all, they have great voice acting. I mean, I really got into what those characters were doing. I especially love the sister at the beginning. She's great. And um, also, the controls are simple, but they still retain that level of depth where you can customize your character and focus on certain aspects of fighting, whatever you want, without getting way too confused over what's going on. And there's just so much you can do, and that's one thing you could get confused over. The, I mean, you can explore the world, you can fight monsters, you can do the quests, you can get married, you can get a job. Like, I mean, oh my gosh, when does it end? I mean, but it's great because you can just pick up and play whenever, and there will usually be something that you want to do. Like, for example, sometimes I just want to run around dungeons, killing animals or whatever, and then sometimes I just don't want to try too hard, so I just run around the town flirting with everybody. And that's really neat. I really like that. Uh, there's also touches of realism throughout the game that, you know, those little surprises that you don't really expect. Like, for example, I was walking through the town and someone started talking to me. And I thought, oh, well, this is just a game. I'll just run past them. I'll come back later. And as I was leaving, the guy was like, oh, hold on, I'm not done talking yet. So, you know, that caught me by surprise, and I stopped, and I turned around, and I walked back to the guy, and he said, as I was saying, and he went on with his conversation, and I thought that was so neat, because, like, you can't think of it like a game anymore. You can't think like the computer does, and you can't 
predict what the computer's algorithms are going to do because it's more like real life now where you have consequences for what you do. And that kind of scares me because I like, um, you know, saving and trying all kinds of crazy stuff and then restarting. So this, this keeps me in line, which I think is really great. Of course, not all games are perfect. And I did have one little thing that kind of bothered me, but it's not like an end-all thing. It's just a personal thing where you can seem to see and hear and know things that your character should not be able to. Like, for example, there was a, an example where your character was asleep and some stuff was going on in the background, and then the girl wakes you up and... The character should not know what happened while she was asleep, but since you're a third-person observer, you know what happened, so thus the character somehow magically knows what happens. And that very slightly hampers my relationship building with the character, but it's not like a horrible thing to do, because it's just another method of storytelling third-person instead of first-person. I mean... Stories have done that for centuries, so it's nothing different. I It's just a personal thing, because instead of being, like, the puppeteer for the character uh, in fantasy-type games, I actually like to be the character, so I like to know what the character is supposed to know, nothing more, nothing less. But, like I said, it's, it's just a personal way of telling a story. So, in closing, the more and more I play this game, the more worried I get, because... I keep thinking, oh my gosh, this game is going to be my next Oblivion, and for the next two years, I'm going to have to just pry myself away from the game to eat and sleep every day. So that, if you're into Oblivion and games like that, like I am, open world sandbox games, this, this is it. <laughs> so... We'll see what happens, and by the time we review it, if we review it, keep in touch for that. I will definitely be an expert at this game, I can tell you now. Alright, well, look out for that, and I will see you later.